Hi, I'm Keith Fennick. I'm hoping to show you a wide range of tips that will help you in your development as an artist. I'm now going to show you some of my techniques for painting rocks and cliffs. I'm just applying a raw sienna wash over the cliff face and the rocks in the foreground. I like two or three colours on these. Bit of burnt sienna. A bit of burn sea and it warms the whole thing up, particularly in the foreground. And a bit of purple, that's just a bit of cobalt blue and a bit of some crimson. Put a bit of that in as well. And then right, all we do now, it should be a third drawing we do this. We get the knife, we just move the paint like that to show. So we do this every morning when you're buttering your bread for breakfast. Should be a third dry always when you do this. I need to dry that now, and then we'll put a few little shadows in the rocks to give them a three-dimensional feel. Using the rigger brush then I'm going to put a few shadows between each layer of cliff. This is a bit of shadow down here. Same over here. Down here, we'll put a bit of shadow around there. We'll blend this in a moment. I'm just, to use a technical expression, I'm slapping it on. I'm dipping the rigger in water and I'm just scumbling, spreading that across like that. Just linking the rocks together with the land areas. And there we are, simple cliff scene. I want to show you another technique now for painting rocks wet in wet. So we're going to apply a bit of raw sienna. These are a group of jagged rocks. These could be coming out of the sea or up in Scotland on the moor, something like that. So I'm just putting initial wet wash on underneath. Then we'll drop some other colours in, a bit of purple. While the underpainting is still wet, we're just dropping 
a range of colours on, letting them fuse together. Bit of burnt sienna. And then we'll use a rigger brush, a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of burnt sienna. And we'll just add a bit more detail here and there. I'll just dab it on like that, creating some cracks in the rock. The colours you use, of course, depending on where you are. If you buy a river, they might be covered in a green moss. If you're in the sea, there could be a grey colour. When you're on site, you can represent the actual colours. Setting more depth around the bottom. Just a little bit more colour on the top there. And of course, another technique you can use you can scrub a bit of tissue like that. And by stippling like that, you lift off some of the colour. And all we need to do is put a little bit of, we we'll assume this is on grass, a little bit of green. And don't forget, those rocks weren't put there last night, so what we'll do i we'll just create a fan brush by fanning a round brush and flicking little bits of tufts of grass up like that. And there we are, rocks wet on wet. I'm going to use a resist now to paint rocks. So I'm using a white oil pastel. I could use a crayon, I could use a candle. But I'm just going to put on some marks here with a, a white oil pastel. Because when I paint over the top, it'll resist it. Let's put a little bit of purpley blue on for a few Marks there. Then all we do is paint over the top. We use a three-quarter flat. We use a bit of raw sienna to start with. And you can see already, look, that the resist I put on is repelling the paint. There are so many different ways to paint things. This is perfect for painting lichen on rocks and that. So a bit of brown now, a bit of paint's grey, a bit of red. Paint's grey, a bit of lichen crimson, a bit of burnt sienna. Yeah, the darker you do it, you can see the resist coming out now. You can see where the actual resist is the paint. And there's another way to paint rocks. There's so many different ways when you learn to paint landscape painting you can try. 